What's up everybody? We're here at Carolina Bully Farms and uh, I thought I'd start doing a new thing. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to call it yet, but kind of our CBF version of a vlog or vlog or whatever that's called. People's been asking us to do it. Uh, I figured I'd just sit down with one of the dogs each time and uh, talk a little bit about dogs. And uh, who better to start it with than Mo Money here? Right Money? Who best? Hmm? And uh, it's finally, it's kind of freezing tonight, but in general the weather is getting a little bit better, so we'll be having more videos come out soon. Uh, but since I'm in here with Mo Money, I thought I would talk a little bit about the American Bullies, like, direction of, kind of, as a breed, where it's went. Because I get so many questions and people uh, ask me all the time, oh, do y'all breed um, micros, or do y'all breed exotics, or pockets, or this, and I, I think a lot of people don't necessarily, oh, sorry, money. I mean, trippy. I think a lot of people don't necessarily understand what is what, uh, and then also uh, a lot of people think that they're totally different breeds. And you know, people say, "Oh, do y'all have blue nose pit bulls?" Or I'm looking for a blue nose, or you know, this or that. So I mean, kind of to get. I don't know. I've kind of covered some of this stuff before, but some of it I had, and some of the videos are older. So. Um, the reason everyone says blue nose pit bull when you're first getting started into it is because most of the earlier bullies had that blue nose or blue coat. Uh, it was just common in the bullies. It just it doesn't mean you know a dog who doesn't have a blue coat or blue nose that can uh, not be a bully or not be extreme. It just that's kind of what they got labeled as to begin with because a lot of the earlier American bullies had the blue color. Did you go in your house and get warm? He has a little heater right there. Like Mo Money is a perfect example of a blue, blue nose, blue American bully. But a bully can also be blue nose without having to have the blue coat. I mean, every one of our dogs here on the yard is technically a blue nose American bully. And uh, you know, a, a, an American bully can be red nose too. They can have. I mean, technically a nose color. You know, the blue nose is supposed to be like Money's color. But you know, dogs like Moo, Moo would be considered a blue nose. Her nose is black, but just because of the way her colors and everything lines up. Uh, you could have a you know a white dog with a red nose, you can have a fawn dog with a red nose, red, red nose. All of those kind of things get people confused. But then once you start thinking bully, people think blue nose, and then the next thing they find out after that is razor's edge. So people say, Do y'all have razor's edge bullies or razor's edge pits or uh, They'll tell me I've got a razor's edge, this or that. I mean, you're you're just speaking about a bloodline here. Or some people will even say I've got an extreme bloodline, which makes even less sense. But razor's edge is just kind of the, the very first uh, popular bloodline of American bullies that uh, uh, was created by Dave Wilson way back, I guess, close to 30 years ago now. And uh, so that's why it kind of got labeled as the first bullies, which I guess his dogs were the first bullies, but... Uh, nowadays, you know, there's so many different strands and branches off and stuff that you can't just go by if it has razor's edge blood or not. I mean, probably 99% of all American bullies have razor's edge in them, but then most of them probably also have dogging line in them. And then from those two main bloodlines, you get every other bloodline branch off that, you know, is in bullies. So you, you really can't go so much by that either. Uh, you got to look at each dog and look at the pedigree and uh, figure out what style of dogs you like and go from there. But the bullies started out, you know, as, as the more pit bull style dogs and they gradually got more and more extreme. Uh, dogs like Little Row and uh, Remy Martin come along. If you don't know who those are, look them up. And from there you got dogs like Hef and King Kamali. And the bully was kind of going in that gradually getting shorter wider, more extreme look, but everyone's still wanting them to have the, well, if you'll come out here and let me demonstrate. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. They still, people, you know, the bullies still want, they want that blocky square head with the square muzzle and the big shoulders and low to the ground. And uh, kind of the next era after that, King Kamali, Hef, uh, who else? Uh, Little Row era bully was the, uh, the Mo Mung era, and Mo was one of the first more along the lines of a pocket extreme. I mean, you had your bigger dogs, but not, and then you had your, you know, your shorter dogs like Gargoyle and uh, Paco was some of the first pockets, but you didn't have a lot of dogs carrying that really big extreme frame on a more more pocket height dog until like Money come along, King Gotti, who was some of the more uh, ones around that time, Denzel, 
Uh, that was kind of the next era bully that was around 2011 or so. And I'm just jumping along and hitting the, the high points of when it changed. And then from there, uh, oh, right around, I think, 2013 or so, you had like Dax. That was when he was coming out. He's about was about the same age as Mummy Dax had passed away now. Uh, but then from there, they took a really sharp turn, uh, what was trendy in the bully world. And you had your Miyagi's and stuff like that come out, Bullseye. And then you started getting the micro and the exotics. And that really changed the look of the bully a whole lot. You went from dogs that would still have, you know, reminiscent somewhat of a pit bull or a really early American bully with the chiseled blocky heads and the uh, cheeks and really muscular to getting really more along the lines of that Frenchy look. And they're starting to get, you know, money's still an 80 pound dog. From there you go toward, you know, 40 and 50 pound dogs and they're just getting really tiny and small. And I think that's where the bully world really split at. The ABKC kind of fell apart because of everyone's disagreements about it and then other political crap. But, uh, you know, people always ask us because they know that ours are more of the extreme style. And I think that that style of bully has a huge following, but it's not in the bully world what's really trendy right now. But I think more people, the public in general, like that style better. And they, they are all worried about having those type of dogs. They don't want to have that because they know they don't live as long. And they're, they're not uh, really what a lot of people that like the true bully would like anymore because it's changed so much. And now whether it's changed because of mixing breeds or just too much inbreeding, I don't know. I don't, we're not really involved with that style of dog at all. But, uh, I mean, we do have, we have some Dax blood on the yard, I think. I don't know, we may have some really distant Miyagi blood, but that's just because you have to have outcrosses and you have to have uh, different blood. If we just bred Mo Mungy style blood all day, all day, we would end up creating some exotics and some messed up stuff because they'd get too inbred. So we took the dogs that most fit our look, uh, which is the, you know, like Dax's earlier style before people's mixed a lot of the more micro exotic stuff in with it. And we added some of that in to keep it going. And then the big country blood now. And you just kind of have to have a vision and know what to mix to get what you're wanting without messing up your line. But that's kind of getting off topic. Uh, where was I with everything? The, um, the micros and the exotics and stuff are, you know, people almost think that's a whole different breed now. And it really should be considered a different breed. But um, people, you know, they don't really like that style and they, they don't want to associate it with the bullies. And uh, I think that they more relate us to the extreme style. But not that people don't like it. There's a lot of people that do like it. But the people that like our style tend to not like it as much. Right, Mummy, they like your style? Yeah. Money and country and all of those type of dogs. So, you know, what you, people's got to realize, though, is there's still this extreme style of bully out there. You just have to find it. And that's why I think that we're more popular in the general public world instead of just the American bully world nowadays. But uh, that's just kind of a, a little history on where the American bully has kind of went. And uh, I think for the good of the breed, you know, you people should keep breeding this style along with the other one just because... When you get that Frenchy style, you're really getting away from what the breed actually was and you're losing the breed. And uh, I think that's why registry split up and so many different things popped up and all because you got your people that love this style and people that like the other style. And it's caused, you know, a lot of conflict on which one's right. And I mean, I guess technically really no one's right. It's just which style you like better. But if you do like a true American bully, this style is way more reminiscent of that. And that's what I like. That's what I think a lot of people fell in love with that style and then... Uh, you know, it kind of really veered off in another direction. But at CBF, we'll always keep breeding the healthy, true, extreme American bullies. And uh, money's always going to be our foundation uh, when everything's based off of. Even country, a lot of people don't realize that country is a money grandson. And uh, you can take a look through the yard here and see. And I wanted to touch on some of our new females. First, if you spin around, you got Moo, who's very present at the moment. Those will be coming up in a couple weeks, I think. She didn't even want to come out of the doghouse too much. But Moo, uh, you know, she's one of our, our new foundation. Oh, you're going to come out, big fat girl? Look at all of that. Good gosh. She's looking awesome. And then uh, you have Kiki here, which Kiki actually has some uh, some Dax blood in her. And actually, Moo would be our female that has a little bit of Miyagi way back. But uh, that just shows, you know, bread right, you can use any of those, that blood to, uh, to make, you know, more of an extreme, true style American bully, if you will. Then you got Kiki, she's a Dax granddaughter, Mo Money daughter. 
Uh, then you have over here Big Gypsy, Hanky Girl. She's a Momoni daughter. Just a monster. Just a perfect example of a big, extreme female gypsy. Probably pushing 90 pounds. Then back here hidden, you got Little Ace, which y'all know Little Ace. He's not Monkey Blood, but he's the, the old man, the guardian of the yard. He's Mr. Gucciano Blood, which is some really early Goggy Line pocket blood. If you haven't ever seen, uh, which he's West Coast Goggy Line Blood, like Romeo and stuff like that, the Craig and Dax before Dax. If you look up Mr. Gu uh, I think it's, yeah, Mr. Gucciano is his dad. You can check him out. He's, he's probably dead, but he was an awesome little pocket. Cookie. Cookie's just another combination of the big country and money blood. Uh, keeping along with that pocket extreme style. She's still bully, but she's short and small. She's got tons of girth and bone on her. Just like her half-sister here, Miss Country, who is just, uh, just an incredible extreme pocket female. I mean, she's pocket height, but with you know all the extreme features. That big, huge sculpted head, short little compact muscular body. See her over here, she just She's just a little tank. And, uh, oh, by the way, Cookie's bred, too. She's just not showing yet. Then three fat here. Perfect little pocket pit, more of a two fat style. She's about nine or ten months old, I think. She's just now starting to fill in. Peaches is a great extreme female back there that you can't see right now. Oh, there you go, Peach. She is bred to two fat. I expect some stuff real similar to three fat out of that one. I think she might be starting to show a little bit. And uh, that's all of our kennel dogs in here. You know we've got Country and Chubby. Two fag in the house, which Chubby is two times Dax. He's just a really, you know, well-bred, our style of that blood that we like and we picked out to incorporate into the yard just to keep things having the same look. you got to add in the new blood sometimes to keep things having that same look or you'll get too inbred. But uh, I'll show, you know, you got Tiny Dancer and uh, Lucky Lucy out there too that I can't show right now. They're over in their area. But this is our first little just dog chat CBF vlog. If y'all like it, comment. If you don't like it, I don't care really that much anyway. But you can comment or thumbs down or whatever. Thanks for watching, everyone that supports us. Remember to like, favorite, and subscribe, and God bless.